is every Minecraft thing that'll confuse you. Because honestly, it confused us too. And hey, the YouTube scientist told me that absolutely zero people have subscribed using their elbow. So if you're up to the challenge, place your funny bone on that button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Minecraft stacks by default only go up to 64, but there's something secret that happens when you get a stack of items larger than 1,073,741,823. And you're able to find it out with this mod. With the mod stacker, you're able to change the config to have up to a billion items in one stack. And when you have to hover over the items to just see how many you have in that stack, you know that you're pretty rich. And honestly, for how fast some farms can get in the game, it would be funny to see all of that output put into one single item slot. Oh, and what's the secret thing that happens when you get your item stack over that limit? Well, thanks to the integer limit, the game just is gonna crash. I guess we only go up to 64 for a reason, huh? With the help of downloading a mod or by building an update suppression machine like this, we're able to glitch out the game in such a way to split up the two block tall door into just half of a door, which can get quickly confusing when you're flipping each one individually. But hey, we're not able to put trapdoors sideways, so the idea of doing this doesn't seem that bad to me. I mean, I would prefer a better texture than this, but if it was possible, great. I would go through with it. Since 1.19, we've been able to put chests inside of our boats, and now we're able to add anything inside of your boats. Since with the mod boat with everything, we're unsurprisingly able to add everything inside of your boat. And folks, the results here get pretty ridiculous, because while there might be some things that seem useful, like keeping an ender chest in the back seat, there's plenty more dumb ones to use, whether that's a dirt block, a door, or TNT. I mean, jokes aside, there's some really cool things here that if they were added into the game, would be revolutionary. Just not a dirt block. I don't think anyone needs a dirt block passenger. My inventory slots work fine for that. Stone cutters don't hurt us, but clearly they can hurt stone. I mean, how else does it cut it? So the idea behind this is that what if stone cutters could actually cut stone in the real world? Or wood, or dirt, or grass, or really anything. Since the idea behind this mod is that if you were to put a stone cutter on top of a slime machine, you can use it to systematically cut down your entire world. And at that point, even if the block doesn't hurt you, the damage that it's doing to the world is definitely gonna hurt your eyes. And maybe it would have been better for all of us if Mojang had just kept it to the old stone cutter texture and kept the blades away from where we could have used them. In our past Building Sins videos, we've recommended against using diagonal glass panes on your corners like this. And that's because there is no diagonals for glass panes. But with this mod, we're able to do diagonal glass panes, which when you see it is immediately cursed, but also immediately cool. And here, anytime that the glass panes form with an L shape, that corner will get smoothed into a diagonal wall instead, which is quickly something cool to build with. You're just gonna take some adjusting on your eyes to get used to it. It's very safe to call this cursed, and looking at the iron bars and stained glass panes variants, that doesn't make it any easier. While pumpkins and melons have a lot of similarity in Minecraft, particularly with how they're grown, you're able to carve the pumpkins, but not the melons. But this fixes that. And so if you were to tuck this on your server and go ahead with a pair of shears, you could really confuse your friends when you carve a jack-o'-lantern in your face into the melon. And hey, melon golems are originally planned for Minecraft Earth, so if Mojang ever wanted to add that mob back in, they could do it this way. <laughs> Although seeing the inside of the melon is a lot grosser than seeing the inside of a pumpkin. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to it this way. Normally, we're not able to sleep in the nether. That's literally intentional game design. And while it's already confusing enough when the villagers start sleeping in the nether, we can also join in on the fun with this mod. And just like all of the best brilliantly stupid ideas, the mod developer made this in four hours very early in the morning on very little sleep. Which I've gotta say, fits pretty well with the concept. At least now they're able to sleep wherever they want, and it's when you see yourself sleeping on top of an end crystal during the dragon fight that you really tell how silly this gets. But now I guess the dragon's not the only one that's gonna respawn in the end. At least we didn't cost four end crystals. Normally, we're only allowed to place our torches on our floors, our walls, and that's it. However, with this, the lanterns aren't the only ones that we can plant on our ceiling. And the image of an upside down torch is really funny. I would love particularly if this is how you could get the torches to burn out, seeing as the fire just creeps up the rest of the stick that way, and you'd be left with nothing more than ash falling on your head. But I think what's really cool is that the redstone torch works the intended way too. So while I get why this isn't in the base game, I'm a little disappointed to say that we don't have this feature in it. Confusing, yes, but cool, also yes. What happens if you let a ghast kill a cow? Well, usually, nothing. I mean, maybe a steak, but that's about it. But now, if you get a ghast to kill a cow, it'll summon the new ghast mini-boss called the Ghost Cow, or the Gow. And here, the cow's multiple udders have seemingly been replaced with multiple legs. Which, I'll be honest, I wasn't hoping to look at either of those options, but I'm amazed that this is somehow worse. And apparently, the entire reason this mod was made was because of a response in an online quiz when asked, which mob do you fight at the end of the game? And one of the answers was the ghost cow. 
It wasn't true then, but I guess it's true now. <laughs> and I'm sorry that that's the case. It's just too cursed to look at. These are some of the most confusing blocks I've ever seen in Minecraft, so we're gonna do a bit of a lightning round as we go through these sections. Like, what if instead of your sand falling down, it instead fell up? Yeah, I don't even know if you would call that falling. I thought the only things that fell upwards were Nepo babies. And that's not the only thing going the wrong direction, since now we're able to grow our cactus and sugarcane upside down. But when you see this symmetrical farm design, it's hard to say it doesn't look cool. And hey, it seems safer to have the cactus on the ceiling than down by the floor where I am. It'd be my preference too. Or in the same way that we're able to have the six-sided wood blocks crafted from our logs like this, what if we could have six-sided log blocks, <laughs> where the bark texture is visible on all sides of the log? And at this point, I don't know which rings to count to tell how old the tree is. Who knows, maybe this means it's immortal. <laughs> just good for it, but bad for us. And perhaps the weirdest block for us to see is just stone, which I know doesn't seem all that cursed until you place it next to other blocks and you realize that every time that you place this stone, it places exactly half of block off center, which is like the opposite of an oddly satisfying compilation. Leads in Minecraft are a great tool, but they're not always able to be used on everything. But now we've broken down some barriers. And with this mod, we're able to leash players and bring them around, which uh, that's not one that you can exactly comment on. But if you want to prank your AFK friends, I guess this would be a good mod for it. I'm sure there's nothing else you could possibly use this for. Nothing in the slightest. Moving on. If you ever used scissors as a kid, you've probably also heard that you should never run with scissors. And now we can actually have that in Minecraft since this mod, now if you hold shears in your hand while you're sprinting, you're gonna take constant damage. And the same will also happen if you're swimming or take fall damage. And for the real cherry on top, there's also custom death messages when you die this way. Which, I mean, is your own fault. If you're still running around with this, even after taking damage all the way down to death, you deserve to get cut short. Let's put it at that. Did you know that the original crafting recipe for the brush was that you would have three string on top of two sticks like this? Which, I'll be honest, doesn't look like a brush, it looks like a string pickaxe. And that's definitely what Phoenix SC noticed when they made their video. Which then led to this mod giving us a string pickaxe, a string axe, string shovel, string hoe, string sword, and string boots. Man, why would you craft these? Well, they all come with built-in silk touch. And the string boots even let you to walk through cobwebs without slowing down. Just don't try to use them for too long. After all, they're made out of string, so they're a little stingy on the durability. Or, sorry, stringy on the durability. But now you know that if you take wheat and put it into a crafting grid, you're gonna get a block of thatch? Well, that doesn't seem right. But the idea behind this quark feature is that we can have a version of the hay bale block without that red band surrounding the center. Which looks odd at first, but once you get used to it, it's a great tool for medieval builds. Especially when you can craft it into stairs and slabs for roof design. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that farming in Minecraft is a lot easier than it is in the real world. I know, that sounds crazy. And we might have the game's wonky physics to thank for that. See, even beyond being able to bone meal crops to maturity in a matter of seconds, there's also some weird magic that happens with the farmland itself. As you'll notice, even though the only thing between this water source block and farmland is air, the crops are hydrated just the same. And I know that there are water droplets in the air, but even this seems hard to believe. Here's how to moonwalk in Minecraft. All we need is an elytra. First off, we're gonna fly down to the ocean, and then hold up the space bar so that we push ourselves back up to the top of the water. And then from there, we can just start walking backwards. Which is a fun sight for sure, but remember, this will use up some of your elytra durability, proving that even the best dance moves have their expiration date at some point. At first glance, this build might not look that weird, but zoom in and you'll notice that these arches are made of curves instead of stairs. And while it's hard to imagine anything like this in the base game, getting to play around with this feature in the Architecture Craft mod does show off just how many possibilities can come from one simple curve. By using this command to change the scale of our projectiles, you can see that when we get ready to shoot an arrow from our bow, it's gonna be a lot larger than the bow that we even used to shoot it. And to me, this is hilarious. I mean, if you only had one in the chamber, you'd at least hope that it's one of these. That seems like it would get the job done. And seeing this done with all the different projectiles in Minecraft, it gets pretty funny. Plus, we can even have it go the other way, giving us teeny tiny projectiles that we can shoot out. I mean, I've heard of a pea shooter, but I've never heard of a pea-sized shooter. That's just brutal. And I think it's very funny when you see this done with tridents as well. We don't think of those as projectiles, but now we might think of them as forks on the ground. But hey, if you come to a fork in the road, I guess you can pick it up. This is a stone. This is a stone chunk. And this down here, that's an iota. Because with the help of the stone cutter, we can turn one stone block into progressively smaller
smaller bits, until eventually we have 262,144 stone dots just from that original stone block. And if you're wondering, yes, you do still collide with them. So good luck making your way out of that maze. Now, we just saw that lava and water mixed together to make obsidian. So why does this work? Well, by using a sneaky warped sign, we can place a water source block underneath our lava and the lava block will treat it as if it's placed on the sign, not the water. And similarly, we can get lava underwater by using a cauldron. So have fun burning alive in the ocean. Or how about burning alive when you can't even see the fire? Now, sure, there is fire here, but with a debug stick, we can change the way that it's facing until it's no longer rendered like normal. And in fact, we can only see the flames if we crouch down over here. They're completely invisible anywhere else. You might not see it, but there's actually a fish living inside of this block. Sure enough, you can waterlog mangrove roots and the water doesn't flow out, meaning a fish can live safely inside. All you have to do is place a tower of two root blocks, fill the top one with regular water, and then the bottom one with a bucket of fish. After that, break the bottom block and you've got yourself the weirdest fish tank. Thinking of the right name for a pet can be tough work. So if you're really strapped for options, this might be a good fallback. All we'll need is a bit of ingenuity and a complete lack of remorse. See, if we were to take one of the name tags that we got from exploring and put it into an anvil, then all we've got to do is go into our settings, change our native language, and then rewrite the name of the name tag as, well, name tag. And then once we change our language back, you notice that we're finally able to name a name tag, name tag, and use it as a name tag for our new animal. So if you want to circumvent this one Mojang rule, I guess it's the way to do it. Though I might add, your pet might hate you for it. Why place your fences like this when we can do this instead? Well, it does offer up some extra detail, but it seems a lot less useful as a fence. I mean, what are you trying to do? Stop spiders from crawling out of a farm? I didn't think so. But if we're talking about placing blocks off the grid, then we're just getting started. Here we've got an illusion where this block looks much larger through this portal than it should ever have any right be. And this isn't through the block display command or anything like that, it's just through these portals that we have here. Since if you link together one small and one large portal, then we can place blocks behind the portal and replace the frame, so that the blocks that we place through will either look really small on one side or incredibly huge on the other. So the grass might not always be greener on the other side, but it definitely is bigger through this. In Java, we can waterlog these blocks, but in Bedrock, we can waterlog all of these as well. And with the ability to place different redstone bits, as well as doors and beds underwater, we can make our underwater base feel a lot more like Atlantis. But on top of waterlogging our blocks, what if we could use lava instead? With the mod Towelette, we can waterlog a block with any placeable liquid, letting us take our hot tub from this into something much hotter. And honestly, having a way to use lava like this could allow for some really interesting redstone designs. And if not that, it just looked really cool for building. If we were to set up one of our portals bigger than the other end of the entrance, then when we go through, we will be teleported to our other destination, except you'll get bigger every time. And so if we take this to its logical extreme, we can get incredibly huge until we're basically rivaling the giant zombie. Although we're able to do a lot more. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. So they have 100 points of health and we only have 20. So I think we still got kind of a raw deal here. This here might look like a stick, but it's actually facing the other way. And the reason for that is that this is actually a new item called create five connected rooms around you. Kind of a mouthful of a name, but when you use it, it'll create five randomly generated rooms that you can walk through. So when you go inside, it looks to be a burning fire hazard of campfires. So let's swirl around this way. And now we're into mud blocks and keep going through the spiral staircase and we'll work our way up to quartz all the way up to banners and then just fall through the floor. Yeah, the randomly generated part doesn't mean that these are always walkable, but it's more than a little mind bending to do this loop. And hey, if we're gonna run around in a treadmill, at least we're making it an interesting one. Finding Minecraft details can be a tricky process, and sometimes the real secrets don't come from the game itself. For instance, take the Iron Golem. Now, in game, I always figured this red pixel functioned as the pupil, but no, all it takes is one look at the official 2019 Valentine's Day post from Mojang's Instagram to see that the red part is actually the Golem Sclera. So does that mean that this is canon? Well, I guess I don't know. After all, there was the famous bluestone incident from the Village and Pillage trailer, so maybe promotional art isn't always to be trusted. But if I had to bet on my assumption versus the artist's rendition, I'd pick the official every time. Phantoms are one of the worst pains in the game, and somehow these monsters are always gonna find new ways to be a thorn in your side. Case in point, if you ever thought that dealing with phantoms on land was a bad nightmare, then fighting them in water is sure to be a rude awakening. Because, as you can see, the creature of the night sky can do surprisingly well underwater. Even 
even attacking you when you dive into the ocean. Nope, not even the water can keep you safe from these terrors. But hey, at least you can sleep down there. I guess that's one way to avoid them. If we mess around with the config settings for the Immersive Portals mod, then we can change it so that the end portal that we find in the Stronghold will actually show us a scaled view of what we're gonna see on the other side. And you'll see as much when you put in all the eyes of Ender, giving us basically a diorama of the end portal to look at. And it gets even more trippy when you jump in and then you seamlessly enter through the portal. At that point, what looked to be like we're jumping into a hologram actually turns out that we're falling directly into the end fight, which can easily throw off your head for scale. So if I had the choice for fighting the Ender Dragon on this small display, I think I'd be able to beat it faster than most speedruns. One bad and you're done. Minecraft has plenty of care put into its animations, but if you blink, you might not always appreciate them. That is until you use this command. See, in Bedrock, it's actually possible to use the play animation command to apply different animations to the various mob models. Meaning not only can we make a piglin dance, but we can do the same to ourselves. And the results can get pretty ridiculous. So if you want to take the time to appreciate Minecraft's vast animation library, this might be the perfect tool for your future dance party. This anvil will never hurt me, because even though you do take a lot of damage from a fallen anvil, if an anvil were to pass you by, you don't take any damage. Which gives for the ridiculous sight that you see in this example. Here we are in survival mode, and no damage is taken from the anvil. Which I guess makes sense, it's still treated like a falling sand entity when it's moving this way. But something about seeing 31 ingots of iron just passes by unscathed, I think it's a sight worth trying for yourself. Minecraft held items haven't always made a lot of sense. Like why is it when I hold these nether sprouts items, they're floating in my hand instead of, you know, holding in my hand. And here we're gonna make that example look basically normal. Since using this command that you see on screen, we're able to change the size of any held item that we have in our hand. So while we both might have a diamond sword, I think we all can agree that that's not a knife. Now that's a knife. And now the only thing you have to worry about is people thinking that you're compensating, which, uh, <clears throat> next point. This might look like a pretty mediocre base with an even more mediocre door, but the truth is anything but. Since when we open it up and step inside, we'll find that we've created this entire massive base in a completely different cyberspace. And really, when you see one of these examples with the immersive portals mod, it does not take a stretch of the imagination to picture the kind of TARDIS that you could make with this. It is pretty cool. And it makes me wish we could connect portals like this in the base game. With this command, it's possible to summon a permanent falling sand entity. And by changing this NBT tag, we can make it look like any block is placed outside of the grid. And by using invisible shulker entities, we can give these new illegal blocks their own hitboxes. So they'd even behave the same way, giving us curse sites like this, or even letting us place blocks underneath the void. And that'd be how Mr. Cat built this entire house underneath the bedrock floor. But why stop at placing illegal blocks when we could rotate them too? Using this modded wrench, we can rotate and nudge blocks off of their regular path which, as 8-sided square shows, can create some hilariously cursed builds, like turning a drip leaf into a droop leaf, or putting four flower pots into the same one block space. And really, it's only gonna take a few clicks before everything looks out of place. But that's not the only thing out of place, and I'm sure you'll quickly notice that this water isn't where it's supposed to be. Though if you play in this specific snapshot 21W03A, it is possible to place lava in the nether, put a glow lichen in it, and then it'll be left as a regular water source block. And using in this, we can turn a lava lake into the obsidian that we'd need for a portal to get back to the overworld. If we were to take our portal blocks and then make a box of them like so, then when we light a couple of the sides, you'll notice that the world appears sideways. And honestly, watching this in third person, you can tell that it's more than a little trippy. I mean, in one second, we're walking through an entrance and then another, we're falling through the ceiling. But if you want a more open floor plan, it's hard to argue with the results. You just might also be getting an open ceiling and wall plan. Everything's basically the same at this point. With this, it's possible to lay a fake version of a block on top of the face of one cube. And hey, the same could be done with map art if you're looking for a vanilla option. So if you want to hide your valuables chest, just disguise it with an unassuming block, you'll be just fine. Or you can make it look like you have illegal blocks like Bedrock in Survival. The Lily of the Valley has the exact same texture no matter which angle you view it from, which makes for a really weird optical illusion when you start to walk around the Lily. And as this video points out, it even still works like that if you stand above it and move around in a circle, which is more than a little weird and honestly it starts to hurt my head. Now, the laws of gravity don't exactly apply in Minecraft. I mean, clearly. But what's stranger than that is when Minecraft isn't even consistent on its own terms. For instance, gravel falls and there's nothing beneath it. And similarly, a lantern can only be placed with something solid above or below it. So then why does this work? Sure, the gravel is supported by the lantern, but the lantern is supported by the gravel just the same. And if you break either one, the whole thing falls apart, giving us all perhaps the most literal definition of a symbiotic relationship. And just like we became a giant, we can also go the other way around. If we can 
continue to wrap through these portals in the opposite direction, we can get ourselves down to an incredibly small size. And what I think is so funny about this is that we actually interact with things very different here. Like for us, falling off of a carpet wouldn't be that bad in regular size. But when you get this small, it's the equivalent of falling off of a five-story building. And the portals aren't just good for changing our size. Since dropping any kind of mob or entity through, we can make them both jumbo size and teeny tiny. And honestly, I don't know what's scarier, a creeper that's the size of a skyscraper or one that's so small that you can't even see it until it explodes. I'll let you decide. Mojang has never cared much for the laws of physics, and there have been plenty of posts made complaining about these nonsensical bits in Minecraft. I mean, we're even guilty of that ourselves. But who among us would complain about being able to become an actual waterbender? See, by using sticky pistons and honey blocks, we can make the water fall however we want it to. And then once you remove it, it'll actually stay that way. Simply build your structure, pour some water over top, and then break all of the blocks that you used when you're done. I mean, if you wanted to, you could use lava as well to make your own kind of modern art piece. Though to me, it looks more like a fire hazard. And really, however you choose to use this trick, it's sure to impress even the most seasoned of players. If you were to put a sapling right up next to build height and then bone meal it, it will grow, but exactly one log. Meaning that even the rules of nature have to follow zoning permits. And honestly, I just think this is a really funny sight to see. And it makes me thankful that Skyblock is actually built at the bottom of the world and not up next to the build limit. Otherwise, that new tree would be a lot more disappointing. You can't see it, but there's invisible pistons here. And the way we did that is using a bug that's in Bedrock Edition. Since if you play on this version, you can make a piston invisible by breaking it while it's being powered by a repeating redstone clock. And then when you add back in the blocks and break the clock, it can still function like a regular sticky piston. Which I'll admit would make for the coolest hidden base of the game if unfortunately it didn't reload as soon as you log out of the world. But still a cool glitch to experience while you're in it. This is a chest full of stone, and this is a full stone chest. It's confusing, I know. But while Mojang only lets us make this one chest design, the frame block mod not only lets us make a chest out of birch and dark oak, but also out of random blocks like obsidian and cobblestone. And if you think this chest looks cursed, let's take it one step further. Or rather, three steps further. As wild as this L shape looks, it is possible in Minecraft history. And as Baron Dunn will show you, there was one of these triple chests that naturally generated on 2v2t. And the way this was created was by two different dungeons generating nearby each other. And nowadays, the closest we can get to this is by using a mod like Colossal Chests, which is arguably just as cursed. I usually don't think of experience orbs as entities, but after this experiment, you'll think of them as monsters. Since by throwing a bottle of enchanting through one of these portals, we can have the experience orbs that it's dropping become bigger and bigger in size. Until eventually, as we can see from Theo Monty, these could become some of the largest entities that you've ever seen. And at this point, it looks more like a giant slime than a giant XP orb, but unfortunately, even if you collect it, it still gives you the regular amount of experience. But if that bums you out, no worries, since we could also shrink them down through that same system until eventually you just can't even see them. You're just gaining experience for nothing, which I think is kind of funny. These are not glass blocks, but rather, with this special mod, we get to place our glass panes horizontally like so. And not only that, we can also place them at two different levels of the block, almost like a glass slab of sorts. If you've messed around with Minecraft's hidden mobs, then you probably come across this guy, the Illusioner, who among their many abilities has the chance to seemingly create three clones for distraction. But what you might not have noticed is that he doesn't create just three copies, makes four. And then after doing that, the original becomes invisible, or rather gives off the invisibility particles at its location, which I guess would be a useful tip if you could fight them, but since they're not fully implemented anyway, I think it's safe to say this is just a fun bit of info. We're all plenty familiar with piglins, but maybe not like this. And to change their look like that, we'll have to head over to the nether. Then we get our piglins into a pen and flip the switch on a dispenser to equip different items, which clearly can create some odd monstrosities. Or if you want to look at it like this Reddit user, and they're just an anime girl wearing a hat. And honestly, I don't know which is worse to see. Minecraft famously has its share of visual quirks, and while we've talked at length about those in the past, this one just cracks me up. See, if we were to hold a ladder as an item in our hands, it has about the same amount of depth as anything else. But when you place that same ladder on the side of a block, it turns paper thin. I mean, this ladder has less depth than a ladder item dropped on the floor. And unless we get something like default 3D in the base game, I guess it'll be a fun thing to notice going forward. Don't put away that debug stick just yet, since if we were to take that over to an extended piston, we can make a spiffy freestanding piston head table, and that'll all be done without using any extra redstone, which is a lot easier for me to comprehend. If vertical slabs are out, then we can safely say the same for these diagonal slabs, though these, I will admit, look a lot more cursed. But with the ability to build walls in all different directions, that does seem pretty cool, though I'm sure coding in the hitboxes for this 
would be some kind of mess. And I think that's the same reason why these other sloped blocks have never made it into the game. Now, granted, a feature like this is possible in vanilla Minecraft, and Seth Blink's command blocks even prove that. But doing the kind of wacky diagonals and bumps that we see in the frame blocks mod, that's just a pipe dream. Though seeing a roof built like this, instead of one with stairs and slabs, it is a definite improvement. You probably know that carpets can be placed over string, but what about these blocks? Because the truth is that carpet only needs to be placed over any non-air block, which oddly enough means that it's completely fine to bridge with carpet over water, grass, fire, snow, and even lava blocks. And while I wouldn't recommend using only a piece of cloth to keep you safe from the lava beneath, as this user did show, it's clearly possible, just maybe not the most safe. When we ignite this TNT, it's gonna explode, but not in the way that you expected it to, since with the help of a repeating command block, we have it so that any TNT that gets ignited will immediately go up to this huge size, which I've gotta say is pretty terrifying. If my friend put a trap like this down and all of a sudden I'm seeing this giant TNT balloon up, yeah, there's probably not a word for how fast I'd wanna run away. There would be a skip-shaped hole in whatever wall is all I'm saying. And then if we partner this with the summon TNT command to summon a prime TNT, then we can use that giant TNT for an instant explosion. Good luck surviving that. You see, in Java, we see a gold nugget as just that, something that you can use to craft a gold ingot, but that's about it. But in Bedrock, it's fuel for some reason. When I first heard of this, I thought, there's just no way. But yeah, if you try it, it does in fact burn. But it's not even a good fuel source. You need about 12 of them just to smelt up one item. But if you're looking to burn some cash, I guess this does the trick. Although chests aren't currently a full block, in the old versions, they sure behave like them. And that'd be why we were able to place things like torches, rails, and even ladders on top of our chests. And while I understand why some of this got patched out, it is unfortunate that we can't run our redstone machinery over top of these. That might have made for some cool compact designs. And while you can pull these off nowadays by using update suppression, let's be honest, that just isn't the same. Using the rotation sticks, we're able to position the world in any orientation that we want inside of the portal, which if we use it like this, can basically let us have our own security camera to watch our surroundings. Which is cool, but I do get scared that while I'm cycling through this, I'm gonna see like Golden Freddy sitting down there once. If you've ever gotten rid of a wandering trader, then you know that llamas could be an aggressive bunch. Sure, it's to be expected, they're a neutral mob, but something about getting spat on just adds insult to injury. So if you too are tired of getting saliva sprayed by these bullies, there's actually a way to turn the tables. You see, a shield is decent for blocking, but we can actually go one step further and even deflect the spit. No joke, with a weapon and the proper timing, it's actually possible to hit the spit back at your foe. And now I just wish that it would give you the return to sender achievement as well. That'd be amazing. If you've played around with name tags, you're probably well aware of the different Easter eggs certain names have. And while people will try to get you to believe that the Jeb name tag does more than it does, there is more that we could do using the dinner bone or grum tag. See, the game is coded in such a way where even players will turn upside down when given these names, which means Dinnerbone's account is also shown to be upside down. But in Bedrock, we can experience that ourselves. If not signed in, change your name to Dinnerbone or Grum, and you'll be upside down just the same as they are. Boats haven't always been the easiest to use, and some players definitely remember the pains of crashing one of these on a floating obstacle. But thankfully nowadays, it's fixed so that when you crash, you just subscribe to the channel. But even with that fix, these boats still have plenty of quirks to see. In Bedrock, it's entirely possible to tie your boat to the other end of a lead and drag the thing around. Why you would do this, I have no idea, since I'd rather just break the boat and carry it that way. But if you need to, I guess it works. There's a lot of debates over whether birch logs are ugly, and while I don't want to weigh in on those, I will say that Snapshot 20W28A didn't do you any favors. Since back then, there was a very weird bug when it came to birch trees, where when you'd load up your world, the birch trees would spawn in a square formation in every birch forest, creating this really unnatural sight. And I get that Minecraft's a game made out of squares and cubes, but this might just be pushing it too far. Sometimes the past is very different from how you remember it. But even factoring the Mandela effect, I swear that Minecraft 1.9 never looked like this when I played it. And unfortunately, now when you go to boot up Minecraft 1.9 in the standard Minecraft launcher, you instead be greeted to the sight of everything looking completely broken. The text in the chat will be off, textures look weird, parts of the world are just missing, but luckily when you play this version through other third-party launchers, those tend to fare a little better. You've heard the saying when pigs fly, but how about striders? And sure enough, back in Snapshot 20W14A, if you used a fishing rod to pull up a strider into the air and then jumped on it, it would just float in place. And then you could even ride it and move around while it's floating. And even though that got patched out, there is still a way to make your strider float. If you jump off a cliff with a couple of warp funguses on a stick, then when you scroll through them, the strider glitches 
out and it slowly descends down the fall. For a brief time in Minecraft, the deadliest mob in the game happened to be a falling block. Yeah, it doesn't look too intimidating here, but back in Snapshot 18W31A, there was a peculiar bug where if you dropped a falling block on top of a mob, for some reason that would cause the mob to sink into the ground. And unfortunately, we weren't any safer. Since if a player was squashed by a falling block, you would just fall through every other block in the world, including bedrock, and then die in the void. The only ones who were safe were shulkers, and maybe that means their shells are better for armor than we thought. The way that banners render in bedrock, it's possible to place a banner down in water, and it'll be completely visible from up top just, you know, soggy. In this snapshot, if you were to die when you respawned, then what would happen is that you would actually be put into this weird purgatory state between survival and spectator mode. And if that already wasn't existential enough, you could also kill yourself by simply punching, given a death message that would say that you were killed by you with the player's name there and everything. And honestly, dying was the most interesting thing you could do back then. Since you weren't able to move, you could only place down certain blocks, and you were not able to break free. So yeah, I'll stick to punching. Back in Snapshot 21W05A, Mojang accidentally made a block that was stronger than bedrock. Because if you were to use bone meal in a drip leaf plant that you planted underneath some bedrock, then it was fully capable of destroying that block, as well as plenty others, such as enchanting tables or beacons. Which is just great. It's strong enough to break those things, but it's not strong enough to hold a feather. But my Minecraft's never made sense, even with features that stay in the game. When you take a strider outside of lava, it's supposed to get cold. But when you put them in powdered snow, then they get warm again. At least that's how it happens on bedrock. Which, even trying to think of a lore reason for why this happens now, none come to mind. They drop string, not leather. So there's no way they're safe from this. It's just a bug. In 1.16, if you were to use an auto clicker as the dragon begins to perch down on the end fountain, then the dragon's breath that it shoots out would be expanded into a much larger radius. Which at first glance seems pretty bad. The dragon's breath's pretty dead so why would you ever do this? Well, the reason you try this is that if you had an auto clicker getting you full of glass bottles, then that meant that you had plenty of dragon's breath to use in your lingering potions. Which for those of us on Java who don't have the ability to make tipped arrows with a cauldron, this was about the best that we had. Though emphasis on the word had, it's not in the game anymore. If you think milking a mushroom to get stew was weird, you might want to sit down. Since back in the early days of Minecraft, there used to be a glitch where if you took a bucket to a squid, you could actually get squid milk. Now it wasn't a separate item called squid milk, and it definitely was an ink, but there must have been something that went wrong with the code for when they added this to cows that also let you milk squids. I don't know if people eat squid ink and pasta, but something about squilk just sounds gross. And I'm guessing the health inspector had them change this. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?